all you awesome Lake listeners. Thank you for clicking play on the new season three of the Grow Thrive Inspire podcast. We are so excited to launch the new season today and here to help me kick it off is our broker owners, Jeff Krantz and Jason Whittle to give insight into our first Java tip of the season. So let's get caffeinated and jump in. Guys, thanks so much for being here. I'm excited to kick off season three with you and this Java tip. Hey, thanks, Caitlin, for having us. It's been a fun year so far. We're excited to talk about it. We got lots of information for you guys. This one's going to be a good one. Whoop, 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 whoop. You've done really, th- th- these things are picking up speed. I know. It's awesome. I love, I love it. it. So, guys, I just want to start with um, this tip today, just kind of being a market update on where we are in Lake of the Ozarks. The first thing I want to touch on, though, is just if there's anything to be on the lookout for. I know we are often hearing rumors of a potential bubble or buyer's fatigue. So what would be some comforting information for our listeners in this market? Well, we're definitely we're definitely having a lot of conversations around that. I mean, I, I think Non-stop. it's... Non-stop. Yeah, multiple times a week we'll hear... We'll hear about, um, you know, when's this going to stop? Is this a bubble? Uh, you know, everybody's trying to predict, which we totally understand. And, and we want to give information, too. So we're going out and trying to gather as much qualified information as we can and, uh, and give good advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want to, instead of working on feelings, and, and we want to look at factual things, the things that we always, we're numbers guys, so we want to look at numbers. We want to look at how it compares. You know, a lot of people are starting to compare it to 05, 06. You know, are we, is this big crash coming? And when you read the things, the indicators, when you listen to the true experts, it's a different conversation than what they were saying in 05 and 06. So there was lots of warnings in 05 and 06. People were talking about, the experts were talking about a bubble. When you listen to the experts now, they're not talking out of a bubble. And for good reason. And, and there's lots of those, and we can we can touch on a few of those. And just on a national level, so if you talk about it on a national level, mm-hmm. when you compare the inventory from 05 to 2010, it was anywhere from four to six million homes were on the market. Okay. Now we're at 1.1. It's not been that low since the 19, early 1990s. It's not been below. Two million since the early two th- er, since before the two thousand. Oh, okay. Ever since the year two thousand to today, it's always been over two million, until just the last the last year really, and we're at one point one million nationwide. So you got lack of inventory. That was not the case. Everything was overbuilt. The second big indicator was subprime lending. What I mean by that, there was lots of bad loans being made. You guys have all seen those mm-hmm. movies. Uh, anybody could qualify for a loan. People were buying two and three homes. They were flipping them. They were taking equity out of their homes. Uh, people were upside down, even if the market wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. And we're just not seeing that right now. Uh, people are making, banks are making good loans. People are strong financially. If you talk to the banks, uh, all the banks are saying, we've never had such an influx of cash. People have never had so much savings. And part of that has to do with, you know, uh, the government... Mm-hmm. Um, giving some of that money away, but but not all of it. You know, there was it was strong before that, right? Um, so you take all of those factors, kind of in a, in a national perspective, and then when you get specific with the lake, mm-hmm. and it even gets better because when you when you look at the lake, you start thinking about for the first time ever, we're kind of known nationally. You've got. W- w- whether you watch Ozark or not, it's given us national exposure. Absolutely. Whether you feel, you know, the pool should be open and all the all the stuff that happened with COVID, we got national exposure. And so people, for the first time, we're seeing almost as many buyers from out of the Midwest than we are in the Midwest. Not, not quite as many, but way more than we ever have. Mm-hmm. And then you start comparing us, our values to where we are compared to other lakes nationally. We're so we're such a value right now. We, we're we way undervalued than other lakes across the country, and I feel like we offer way more. Yeah. Where in the world can you go on a lake and you go to 60 bars and restaurants? Where, you know, you be on a 50-foot Sea Ray or a 60-foot, you know, MTI, whatever it is, like our lake offers so much more. And for the first time ever, it's getting national notary. So all of those things are kind of creating this perfect storm. And all the indications are showing that we've got, 
You know, nobody has a crystal ball. Mm-hmm. No, but we're not. So we're not predicting any kind of rapid change any anytime soon. We can't we can't see how how it could. So that leads you right into the the uh, other common term, uh, <laughs> buyer fatigue. I mean, that is why you we are experiencing buyer fatigue. And I you know I hate to say it like this, but I. My, my opinion about buyer fatigue is, is, is it just comes from lack of the correct expectations. Right. It's a great time to get into the market because we don't see a change. Um, the people who are sitting on the sidelines waiting, um, they might be waiting for, for quite a while. The ones that are getting in and experiencing buyer fatigue, sometimes that, that could be an agent's fault. Sometimes that could be a, just a, a fact that the buyers aren't ready because you do have to do different things today to get in. You are dealing with multiple offers. You're dealing with a, you know, sometimes you can't find what you want and you have to be prepared when it hits and partner with a, an agent that is going to be ready and help you help you be there. Um, if you do that, you can win. Mm-hmm. But it's just what Jason described, the reasons why, you know, we don't feel like it's going to change right away because of that inventory and the difference in the lending regs today. That is what causes the buyer's fatigue when an unprepared buyer that's trying to get into the market hasn't been, you know, they haven't put all their ducks in a row. Right. And they get tired. They lose a couple deals and they start thinking this is not the time for them or they just can't take it when it doesn't have to be like that. So right. So we're constantly talking to to our agents about how to make sure that, that we can avoid that, that mm-hmm. term. Yeah. And we've also got to be careful too. Just the market's changed a little bit and, and the experts will have talked that this was coming, you know, that we've had such a run up. We don't expect it to continue to run up in the same way. That's not what we're saying. We're, we're saying the market's not going, we're saying it's not going to crash. Right. Or we, right. Don't, we don't feel like it's going to crash, any, you know, anytime but it's going soon. to plateau, but it's going to plateau. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to have small rises then plateau, then rises. Then, you know, it, it's not, we don't feel like it's going to come down in value, mm-hmm. but we don't feel like it's going to continue to accelerate at the same rate. We're already starting to see that. We knew that was coming. We, we actually thought it was going to come a little bit before that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but we're starting to see it now that we've gotten through the f- first half and, of two. And all of these things that we're talking about is kind of what's causing that slight plateau before the next possible increase absolutely it's not one thing it's 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 multiple a perfect storm you know it's it's some property types have such a limited inventory the market's been pushed to the point where the buyers are pushing back a little bit it's taken time because there's so little to choose from and the pricing you know has has kind of leveled out Mm -hmm. some property types you know or areas have have a, a more inventory and less potential buyers i mean all, all types of things, sometimes of year, mm-hmm. you know, something that's often not talked about, that's always been prevalent from the day that I started. June is when, you know, late May, early June, graduation parties, mm-hmm. vacations. I mean, I think that more people are going out. They're making it happen. They're going on vacation. They're, they, they're not going to buy during that period of time. So, you know, that early summer, midsummer phase has always been a great period of time for agents to to see and talk to a lot of people right but it doesn't translate into closings because they're waiting they might be with their kids that week or what have you they buy you know they buy before and they buy after so some of it is natural mm-hmm. it just because we're in this urgent wild time the the uh, consumers and agents feel like it's different but back to what jason said we're going to have several of these Mm -hmm. you know it's not always going to click 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 it's going to here and then flat and then here and then flat there's two really two other strong factors that i forgot to touch on that are going to can that agree with this with this idea and that is that you can't create new lower priced inventory prices are going to remain high because the price of construction as anybody knows if they tried to build a house or (laughs) build a deck or anything uh the cost to build is is at an all-time high absolutely and even though we're, we feel like price of lumber is going to go down it's already starting to go down some it's not going to go to where it was so you can't create the lower priced inventory the second thing is that there's more buyers ever in the history of the world all those millennials that at one point everybody said we're going to live in the middle of the city and rent mm-hmm. well now they're having kids and now they're buying homes and yes. they're buy- and the other factor is that uh 
another factor for Lake of the Ozarks is that people can now work anywhere. Mm-hmm. There's one thing COVID's taught us is that you can, uh, big businesses are allowing people to work from anywhere, and so they're they're starting to move to vacation spots, to places that they would want to choose to live as opposed to being so close. To right, like we always say to our clients, like if you can have the lake in your backyard, wouldn't right. you? I We're mean, right. it's beautiful. So, so can you tell we're passionate about this? Yes, yeah, yes, sorry. me okay. too. Get a little excited. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you guys are excited because I'm going to transition you here a little bit and just talk about you know, a current market update with respect to maybe quarter four of 2020 comparing to now quarter two of 2021, maybe just a market recap and seeing where we are kind of within that market. Can you guys give me some information around that? Absolutely, we can. Just to set the tone, you know, we can't forget what we're comparing to. Right. So that first half of last year contained those first couple months when, um, drastically different than previous years uh, because of COVID, mm-hmm. you know, so March yeah, and we April were shut numbers, down for March and oh April last gosh. year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we we're you know, we're comparing our first half of 2021 oftentimes to the first half of 2020. And when that, you do, it looks rough. really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> pretty hard say. to do. Yeah. I mean, you look at those, you look at those numbers and just to give you a, a, a quick thing is that we're when you compare first half to, to first half, mm-hmm. you're up 79% in volume. You're up 31% in transactions. I mean, those numbers are crazy. Yes. Uh, exciting. Uh, average price per square foot on residential, like front homes, was up 25%, 55% on average price. Uh, those things are exciting, but a little bit misleading. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit. All, even though things have increased greatly, they haven't quite increased that much. When you compare it to the second half mm-hmm. of 2020 compared to the first half of 2021, which again isn't quite fair either because your second halves here at the lake are always stronger than your first half. So so it's not, but it's a little bit fair because it was m- a little bit more of a normal market. Right. The second half of last year actually compared to this year, we're actually down 22% uh, the first half. Uh, and down seven that's in transactions down 17 percent in volume closed and that that's that's the whole overall market and that's that's actually a lot less than it normally is Mm -hmm. it's it's a lot less than it normally is but it's you know when you compare it like that it it gives it a little bit more of a so yeah and, and you know i i think that um one interesting factor that's hard to it it's hard to um it's hard to, to prove this today because it's ever-changing, but second half of last year, the supply was different than it is today. Right. So your buyers, second half of last year, were still working down that inventory. Um, at one point, to give you an example, first half of this year, at one point, condominiums, for instance, were... 50 active condos on the market. I think it got down in the 30s. Maybe. Yeah, yes. I think it did yeah. too. It was below 50 for a, peri- a big period of time. Mm-hmm. I remember um, that. So, you know, when you talk about supply and demand and you have so many buyers looking for so few, what could that market have been if it could have supplied what the demand was? Right. So it is going to be a limiting factor on some level because we have no new product. Now today- To that, put that into perspective real yeah. quick, Jeff, in the like 2010 era, right around in there after the, like almost over 2,000 condos Oh, on the market. wow, yeah. So yes. we're down to 30. That's right, that's <laughs> so, right. And, and you know what? There is development coming. Yeah. There is going to be a little change. But that is going to limit our trans our sales in this market because the supply we don't see the supply diminishing to the point that it is even close to the inventory available. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not seeing that today. Even when we see those plateaus, there's not great changes in supply coming. Is that fair to say? Yeah, but we also want to qualify it in this. You know, everybody talks about there's no inventory. The truth is that that's the wrong word to use. That's right. The real word to use is that there's no sitting inventory or standing inventory. There's actually more product. There's more homes, lots, condos actually came on the market this year than they, than they did last it's year. It's just moving so much it's faster. Just, it's exactly it's right. back and it's back to that who's ready. Mm-hmm. Ready, um, willing, able, qualified. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not a lack of inventory. It's just a lack of sitting inventory. So you just need to qualify that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, With us being halfway through the year right now, what do you guys anticipate 2021 to entail with respect to our market and our industry? 
for the rest of 2021 mm-hmm. here at the lake specifically yeah i think it's going to be very similar to the first half of this year I think we're going to see. I, yes, I agree with the first half. I think we might, we might even see a little decline in number of transactions, but your average prices are going to continue to, to grow. Yeah, I don't think it'll be the same growth that we've had. I think it'll be a much milder growth, mm-hmm. but I think you're going to continue to see those push, just not push as fast as they have. Right, push respectfully with the with the difference with the plateaus that yeah. happen. One of the things that we've seen is, you know, we were talking about buyer fatigue earlier, is mm-hmm. that sellers have just, sellers and agents have just, we've been able to push those prices mm-hmm. so quickly. You know, the market was hard to keep up with. I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd try to value a home, you'd look at it, you'd put it on the market, multiple offers would come, and then it's selling for, you know, with the right strategy and the right, you know, with the right exposure, it's selling for thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more. So, mm-hmm. uh, that started to slow a little bit just because we've we've pushed those prices. Right, I, I'm I'm thankful. I mean, for the hit, you know, for as long as as I've been in real estate, it there's always been interesting because we're you know we're sitting in the middle of the country, mm-hmm. so you've got your coasts which are volatile. Mm-hmm. I mean, wild appreciation, wild depreciation. So when they go through a swing, their pendulum swings a long way. Our 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 area and our buyers are conservative in nature, and and. You know that's that's a lot why we're being discovered because mm-hmm. our cost of living and and our overall what Jason alluded to you know where can you buy lakefront for what you can buy and then live here for it's it's a great place absolutely but I'm thankful for that because you know it 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 keeps us a little bit you know even though we've experienced what we've experienced we're not at the pace of a Florida or California or some of the bigger the right. bigger um, markets. So I think that's going to bode well for us as you know as, as this continues. Mm-hmm. Well, and I want to switch to sellers and buyers too for a second and just get maybe some good advice from you guys for each one. Um, for those who might be still interested in coming to the lake or moving to the lake and just what the market's doing. I mean, I know when we talk to agents all day, every day right now, because of the plateau that's kind of happening, we're reminding people, you know, take your time, slow down. If you're not getting multiple offers, it's okay because we're just, you know, we're going with the flow here. So what would be some advice now currently for sellers and for buyers? So, so one of those things I want to qualify you talk we talk about multiple offers mm-hmm. and, and that's always a double-edged sword because that n- has never happened in all of the price ranges. You get to the ultra luxury, you get to the really high priced off water homes. Th- those have never sold at a pay, you know, sometimes you have to qualify <laughs> what is super hot. And so we're still seeing the, the super hot market in the three to 500,000 off the, or on the water, the 200 to 300,000, off the water, certainly anything under mm-hmm. under 200 is hot off the water, but you have to qualify. And our lake has, you know, we talk a lot about, it's not really the lake market. The lake market has lots of sub markets. We have lakefront, we have off water, we have condos, we mm-hmm. have lots. So all of those things make up the whole broad. And, and so sometimes this big broad paintbrush gets painted for the whole for the whole market and it just doesn't, and without the right expectations, these our sellers come in and they think, well, I'm just I'm going to list and I'm going to get, you know, right. I'm going to get multiple offers, and then it doesn't. Well, right. and it doesn't sell in 14 days. And the, oh, what, well, what's and, happening? And what nobody yeah. talks about is that in those hot parts of the market, hot property types or hot price ranges, sellers are losing thousands and thousands of dollars oh, because of the the not correct representation or I'm going to hurry yeah. or I'm going to sell to my neighbor. Um, or the, just the urgency. The urgency is not a great thing sometimes. Right, we right. got to slow it down. So from a seller's perspective, there's a lot that goes into proper presentation, proper strategy, if you're lucky enough to to even be involved in more than one offer and then you got to be prepared what if you what if you're not? Right. What what if you have, you know, what if you are on the market, god forbid, a month I mean, I can remember when the average time on the market was nine or twelve months. Oh but man, when I first got people, into yeah. to real estate, I, you'd walk away from listing appointments and you'd just be like, "Oh man," well, you just feel sorry for them because they're 
It's not, so different. It is, and not all sellers are doing this, so I don't want to pick on all sellers, but there's no. a lot of sellers that kind of get caught up in that mm -hmm. in that storm, and all of a sudden an inspection comes, and they're, you know, I'm not doing anything. When, when you know, they, they really need to have a good idea of the whole process right. for their best interest and for the buyer's best interest, because oftentimes... That, that first buyer is their best buyer. Mm. Yeah. Love yeah, that. sometimes they, they think they've got a little more leverage than they do. And so, especially now, we're starting to see deals fall through just because of those inspections that are coming through. And they, it, a lot of them are avoidable. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone would just, you know, one party would just give a little bit more, but you throw in the buyer fatigue mm -hmm. and the seller's <laughs> right. feeling like they have more control than they actually do. And then it ends up costing them. You know, they could have fixed it for fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Then they have to put it back on the market. A plan. It's already been exposed, right. so you don't have the same leverage. You don't have it. You know. So, and it doesn't happen all the time, but but that's no. But the market's the always moving. Always. And it's really important to slow that down and 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 get a get a real idea of the approach you need mm -hmm. from a seller standpoint. Um, from a buyer standpoint. Uh, the the um, the the buyers need to be you know as we talked about earlier they need to have the correct expectation from a preparedness standpoint so that they they can w so that they can win mm -hmm. or strike while the while the you know while the right property is there in front of them uh, and then they need to know what the rest of that transaction is going to look like, right? So they can actually get to close. I mean, unfortunately, we're seeing we're seeing some buyers that aren't prepared correctly, and after they get under contract, they haven't anticipated their, you know, what they need to do on their end. So we can help with that. It's not hard to figure out. We're seeing lots of buyers right now. It's a great time to step up. They've got a ton of equity in their condo or their smaller lake home right now, mm -hmm. and so they're able to take that equity, use it as a down payment, and then interest rates are so low that they're actually their payments aren't changing they're buying a you know a whatever how much more of a home mm -hmm. and yet their their interest rates aren't cha or their their payments aren't really changing so we're seeing a lot of people step up it's a great t interest rate we didn't even talk on interest rates right gosh we were just talking with the bankers yesterday and you know they're still in the threes and it's just it's just a really good time to buy a home right now yeah uh, i mean we can expect them to go up just a little bit but um that's just inflation in general though but yeah, they're talking that there's going to be some increases come, not not great increases here in the next year. They don't feel like, but, mm -hmm. but certainly going to. They keep saying that, and yet they're they're not coming. You know, we thought we'd have a little more tick tick up of interest rates than we've had, and it's just not not been the case so far. I'm definitely not going to complain about the rates <laughs> for your dinosaurs in real estate oh. like me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, even if it goes up. What if it doubles right. and we're at five or six <laughs> percent? I mean, to me, I still remember. I mean, I, I remember eight and ten, and I've heard stories of mm -hmm. fourteen, fifteen. So even if it doubles, it's still it's yeah, still it's pretty still awesome. Good. Yeah. So and they're lending. They're they're you know the the lenders, the mortgage companies, the banks. They're lending money. Their terms are great. They're you know it's it's an easy time if. If we're prepared, we do the right thing. It's an easy time to get in, and you know it just—it's just not a. Um, we're not we're not done, so it's a good time to get in. History has shown too is as things get volatile in the country, as things get volatile with the rest of the economy, you know, and there's lots of, everybody's talking about uncertainty in the economy. The economy is separate from real estate. Right. Out of the last five recessions, three of them, real estate actually went up. Mm -hmm. Everybody only remembers the last one, which was actually caused by real estate. <laughs> uh, yeah. But typically people f go to real estate whenever there's struggles in the economy. Mm -hmm. So everything is pointing towards a pretty strong, at least for a while, pretty strong real estate uh, economy. So we're excited. Well, that goes to my last question for you guys. What are you both most excited for when looking at the end of 2021 and even into 2022? Whew, that's a great question. I'm just... For 2022? <laughs> I'm super excited for 22. No. <laughs> oh, gosh. When looking at the end of 2000... I think where it's a time that we're going to look back you know, for the last couple of years, we, we've we've seen some, unfortunately, we've seen some clients that have missed out because they're like, oh, I'm going to wait, you know, I'm going to wait, you know, I'm going to wait for this 
bubble to happen. And I think 2021, you're going to continue to see people that who purchase in 2021 that are really excited that they did. Right. Absolutely. I They're going to look that. back and be like, that's this what was I'm, a smart, that's smart what, buy. That's, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, I think we're super lucky to mm-hmm. live where we live. And, and um, I, I like to see all the changes because everything changes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, we're never staying the same. We're either moving, we're either moving forward or we're moving backwards. Well, our area is moving forward. I right. mean, the development that we have, both from a, a residential standpoint, um, condominium standpoint, our product's getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, our regulations are getting better. Our lake is getting better. So we're definitely, our, even you know, our commercial stuff we've got going now, is un, it's not talked about. Mm-hmm. And it's doing really well. And I kind of, sometimes I talk about this. I get excited because I, I remember when my parents bought here. Mm-hmm. In 69, they bought here. And everybody in their, in their hometown said, you know, you're paying too much. You're going like the Ozarks. Ooh, don't know if you're going to make it. 12 years later, they sold for three times what they bought for. Right. And when they sold, they actually said, the people that bought our place, they probably won't make it. <laughs> they paid too much. 20 years later, my broker listed that place. And I was lucky enough to sell it. It's a small resort. It sold for more than three times what they paid. Oh, wow. History, you know, I mean, it it proves a point. Mm -hmm. And there are folks out there that are going to pass on buying now. But what you said, you wait, you know, it it might be next year. It might be a few years past, but they're going to do the same thing that everybody else does. I mean, I I can't tell you how many times... In 2010, somebody said, it will never be like it was in the mid-2000s. Oh, yeah. And here we sit today. Mm-hmm. So I'm just excited about where we live and what we have yet to see that we don't even know. Right. Is it always going to be the same? No. Nope. We're going to go through all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. But in our area, everything is moving in a positive direction. Yeah, we're so. really blessed to live. I drive over the Grand Glaze Bridge every day to get to the office, and it's just like, oh. I can't believe I live here. I know. We, my family, my kids, we got six kids. They love to surf, wakeboard. And it's just like, it's just right out your back door. And mm-hmm. you get to do it anytime you want. That's so funny because I was just talking to my kids about that too. Just We were looking at the sunset one night and I was like, don't we live in such a beautiful area? I mean, because we always have amazing sunsets too, especially with the water. So Jason was talking about boats earlier, mm-hmm. big boats. And I almost interrupted and said, well, how about if you own a 25-foot tritune and you're here on a Sunday afternoon because it's your lake. Yeah. Nobody else is on it. Everybody likes to talk about the busyness of the big weekends. <laughs> There's a lot more days when it's just your lake. Mm, especially. Well, when you get 1,100 miles of shoreline, there's places for everybody. You want to go fish? You want to go up the lake and fish and not see another boat? Like, go way up the lake. You want to go surf and wakeboard away from the, like, go up. Mm-hmm. You want to go downtown, or downtown, yeah. you know, go into the busy part, you know, go to the restaurants, take your family to eat. There's something for everyone, which is what really makes this lake so unique. It's, it's awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for all this amazing information. You both are so great at breaking things down and also making it fun. Grow, Thrive, Inspire listeners, thank you for tuning in and being great fans. We have more coming, so stay tuned on Wednesdays. You can still find us on all of our platforms and now on 89.3 FM Key Radio in Osage Beach. Keep an eye on our Facebook page for upcoming events, open houses, and fun things going on here at Lake of the Ozarks, and share us with those who love the lake as much as you do. And remember to always grow, thrive, and inspire, and we'll catch you next time.